Welcome to this mini-series of the Smart Firefighting Podcast. Today, we're exploring the inaugural World Fire Congress hosted by the U.S. Fire Administration on May 7th and 8th, 2024 in Washington, D.C. This groundbreaking event unites global fire service leaders to address critical issues such as climate change impacts, emerging technology risk, and firefighter health and safety. Enjoy this three-part series as we hear from multiple stakeholders about the key takeaways and the exciting potential for future collaboration in the global fire service. We are live here at the World Fire Congress with Gary Kirchbaum and Victor Stagnaro from uh, National Fallen Firefighter Foundation. It's been a lot of work and effort to this moment. Um, how are you guys feeling? And, and tell us a little about what the World Fire Congress is and NSSS role in it. The World Fire Congress is a group of nations of all over the world that are coming together for a common goal, which is to look at fire prevention, look at the, uh, the, the different challenges the fire service is facing, uh, whether it be wildfire, uh, high-rise uh, uh, emerging technologies, and, uh, and see how we can together come up with solutions to solve the problems the fire service is challenging, in addition to uh, the uh, health and safety issues that the fire service is, relating, is facing every day. Yeah, so we've, uh, we've partnered with the United States Fire Administration. Uh, we've been working on this for a little over a year. Um, and we are, uh, the foundation has taken on the role of event coordination. Uh, we've also been in, engaged with some of the administrative functions of it. But, um, you know, it was a great partnership. Uh, we feel very blessed that, that they asked us to do it. And Kevin, I'll add the, uh, the mission of the Fallen Firefighters Foundation is to honor every fallen firefighter that dies in the line of duty. And we did that internationally today at the beginning of the ceremony. Our other mission is to prevent line of duty deaths and injuries and to prevent fires. So it really aligns with the mission of the foundation and it just allows us the opportunity to expand beyond the borders of the United States. Well, kudos to everything that NFFF is doing and it's nice when the plan comes together. It's, it's quite the operation there and Gary, I see you yeah. back there leading incident command and it's, it really is an incredible operation. So kudos to you and everyone at USFA and, uh, Again, it's it's May six, I believe May seventh. Uh, lost track of date here, but what what do you hope uh, are some of the takeaways, and what do you hope the World Fire Congress? What kind of ripple effects do you hope it creates throughout um, the fire service around the world? Well, I think we've already seen some of that. We're seeing the uh, the connections made from uh, nation to nation that were never made before. Uh, we're learning about uh, efforts being made by the World Bank and many other organizations that uh, we had no idea of their operations and the things that they're doing in the fire service space. So we're already seeing this, uh, this uh, collaboration coming together and it's just gonna continue on. Uh, the UK has already agreed to do the next World Fire Congress in 2026. And uh, these communities of practice are also gonna be very valuable uh, to keep addressing the challenges we're facing. Yeah, and I tell you, Kevin, it, it's very interesting for everyone to come together and have uh, very common issues within their country. Uh, particularly, I, I, I heard some discussion a lot this morning about recruitment, retention, and uh, just about worldwide, everybody's having those kind of issues. So I think I see a lot of folks, you can see the light bulb going off going, hey, this ain't just us. Um, we, we can work with each other, try to figure out best practices. And, uh, I, and I think by doing that, then, you know, some of these issues that we're having in the fire service in the United States that we can learn from other countries what they're doing. So. One word that one word that I saw Lori put up there, um, Dr. Lori Moore um, mentioned the voluntarily share. Um, it's not necessarily something that no one's required to be here. This is completely voluntary, and the idea is how can we continue to share ideas, share best practices to help protect citizens, help protect first responders. Um, what are your Kind of what are your thoughts or any kind of hot takes in regards to the sort of um, willingness of the fire, World Fire Service members to want to participate and align with USFA and NFFS mission and the World Fire Congress mission? I would add the uh, it's the, the traditional and valued traditions of the fire service to share information, to work together with one another, uh, to try to prevent line of duty deaths and injuries. And, uh, and that's just, you can see that expansion throughout with every nation that's here. 
Uh, and I can tell you there's nations that would like to have been here, uh, but because of visa issues or just the fact that they, they were able to register late, were not able to be here. So I, I can see this expanding uh, much greater uh, in 2026 when the UK takes it over. So the other interesting part that I found is, you know, the, the, the U.S. Fire Service, uh, basically from the beginning, we've, we've always tried to make things better, uh, leave it better for the next generation of firefighters that are coming up. Um, and, and it's this is that's a, a worldwide effort. And so the fire service is the fire service. What I've learned so far doesn't matter which country you're in. We all love the fire service. We understand the fire service and we want the fire service to continue to get better. Yeah, and I'd heard from whether it was countries like Fiji or Barbados or Brazil or America, they all said the same thing. Hey, we, we all share the same problems. Uh, it may seem different and kind of some of the structures and the dynamics are different, but the problems are for the most part the same. And, and, and with that kind of, we can identify the problems, but um, what else, what, what's kind of, what's going to happen the rest of the time here? And what do you think are how, you know, maybe even touch on these communities of action and sort of how we can take the lessons here, learn that we're learning and apply it to continue to address these problems with solutions. Well, Mark, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, Mark, uh, from Australia or from uh, UK uh, mentioned at the very beginning, you know, this, this collaboration component. Uh, we may have some of the answers, but we don't have all of them. And so collectively, we'll be able to resolve some of the issues that, uh, that we're facing every day. The next couple of days, this afternoon, is gonna be uh, uh, fire tactics, fire operations in, in residential buildings. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about um, uh, energy storage, uh, climate change. There's a whole host of things throughout the next couple of days that will be covered. Uh, and that's what each community of practice is gonna be connected to one of those sessions. And, uh, and in the next two years, these communities of practice will gather uh, come up with recommendations and hopefully some solutions as we approach 2026. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Uh, another day and uh, rest of the day and all day tomorrow. We have uh, the top speakers from around the world going to uh, give presentations on those topics uh, to give a little bit of background. Uh, we're going to open it up and have some discussion between the countries. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the dialogue. I'm looking forward to all these uh, experts coming in and, again, sharing that information. And, Kevin, if I could add one other thing, I just want to give uh, Gary a lot of uh, credit for organizing this entire event. Uh, his leadership has brought uh, fire service leaders and, and uh, from the United States. Uh, we have our fellows group. Uh, we've got honor guards uh, from California to uh, North Carolina. So it's this is a national event within the international event. So it's really uh, Gary's leadership that has uh, enabled us to do that. Thank you for being the tip of the spear. Yeah. Well, thanks. And uh, believe me, it's not me. So the fantastic team uh, that Victor and thank you for all the kind words. Fantastic team that we have behind the curtains. Uh, I cannot say enough good things about them. Again, most of these folks are uh, folks that come together for our Memorial Weekend. And uh, we went straight from Memorial Weekend into uh, this event, and they have done a fantastic job. And just couldn't, we could never have done this without the help of them. And a couple of quick final questions here. Um, what are you most excited about with um, the, the initiation, the inaugural World Fire Congress in terms of what will happen next? I know I kind of asked this question of what we do differently, but what do you, what's excited you most about what's happened so far, and, and what do you... What do you really hope uh, is kind of the some of the lasting impacts of this initial inaugural World Fire Congress? I would say the, uh, the well, continue with the collaboration that's going on. Uh, the other, you know, unique piece of what we're watching right now is we're watching history being made. We've got a front row seat to it. Uh, and the idea that this is going to go on for generations, uh, this is the inaugural one. So the ability to address the fire service issues, including health and safety for firefighters globally, uh, the impact that that will have, uh, bringing in experts from all over the world. Uh, and there are a lot of great experts that have been working on firefighter health and safety issues uh, that we're not aware of because we've become so insular. Uh, so I think the opportunity to do that is just going to be phenomenal and, and have a global impact. So this, the real satisfying moment for me 
<clears throat> will be years down the road when we come up with something that made the fire service better. And then we can look back to these two days and realize that the seed was planted here. And uh, that, that's exciting. That's exciting. It should be exciting for everybody in the fire service. And if people are listening to this, they weren't here, how can people, how would you suggest people get involved with the efforts that USFA is doing and F is doing, World Fire Congress? What are some, uh, any ideas of how people can continue to get involved and be proactive within this whole initiative? Well, I would say look at what the U.S. Fire Administrator is doing uh, uh, in, in, in the U.S. Uh, we have the uh, Fire Administrator Summit on Fire Prevention and Control. A lot of the same concerns are being uh, addressed domestically. Uh, you can look at the uh, proceedings report, the reports that came out of those uh, meetings, and then get involved in, in October when uh, there's going to be another uh, summit on fire prevention and control and uh, just get engaged with how you can support those programs. And there's lots of opportunities to do that. I don't have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want, on behalf of just the, the fire service around the world and some of our firefighting and all the partners involved, uh, Victor and Gary, it's a pleasure to, to know you, collaborate with you, and uh, honor to be here and excited for the positive uh, ripple effects that the World Fire Congress will have around the world. We're very grateful that you're here and supporting the event. Thanks for doing that, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to today's episode. What did you think? What did you learn? Hopefully something, right? Please reach out on social media with your thoughts on this episode and any other suggestions for future content. We look forward to capturing more important stories across public safety and are here at your service.